This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Dr. Badrul Huda Khan. This guy's really good. So he's going to tell me all about what he's doing and e-learning and web-based, everything. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. to our show, Dr. Khan. It's a nice, very pleasure meeting you, sir. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself, what brought you here, what uh, made you to cross the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, where you're from, and all those uh, things about it. And then we're going to talk about the e-learning, and talk about the book. Very good. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm originally from Bangladesh. Sure. Uh, came to United States in 1981, July 7. Okay. And did my undergraduate in chemistry, mm -hmm. and did my doctorate in instruction systems technology from Indian University of Bloomington. Sure. And um, in the job situation for me, how I started, I was a medical administrator at the Indiana Medical uh, College, and then joined the uh, University of Texas and become the founding director of a new program called Educational Technology Leadership. And in 1997, I came to George Washington University mm -hmm. as the founding director of Educational Technology Leadership. And you're still there? Uh, I'm not there, but I feel that I have a lot of things to do in my life as I write, speak throughout the world. So I become an independent in instructional design e-learning consultant, mm -hmm. serving international agencies different countries, different universities, preparing uh, professionals in the field of online education so that they can create meaningfully learning. So what's the difference between your online education, e-learning, what the other fellow who's doing is also from Pakistan? No, uh, Salman Khan, the Khan Academy? Yes. Uh, he was actually yeah. Bangladeshi. He's uh, also American. his he, mother, mother, father from Bangladesh. So you have a shared history and shared heritage. Uh, we are not connected by blood, but we are connected We're, by passion. By passion. And our interest. We are not bonded by blood. No. Nope. So, so what's the difference between him and what you do? Well, what he's doing. Well, I. Started, he's making a lot of money too. Uh, well, uh, I'm here for <laughs> disseminating knowledge. <laughs> and, disseminating knowledge. Yes, and uh, because. Uh, Actually, how I started it, I have to go back Okay, to, why don't you tell us a little bit yeah, about it. Uh, this book is web-based instruction. This book was a bestseller in 1996. Uh, what really happened when the web came in 90s, I was always wondering that why I have to come to the United States to do my undergrad? You can do online. I could have done online if there was a web that time. Yeah, right. So I have been thinking about it, when I heard the web can do, you know, images, videos, and all this thing, I was very excited. So I wrote a proposal to the publishers. I want to do a book called Web-Based Instruction. And I first dumped the coin web-based instruction, that particular proposal. And it wasn't easy, they accepted it. So here the book comes, book become very well-known, bestseller, 350 university at that time, adopted the book as a reference guide, and also textbook. So the blessing of the book, I have been all over the world speaking about how to use the web for instructional purposes. Like people can use web for informational purposes. Like if you have a website for your company, you put about information about your products and services. But I was thinking, I have a doctorate in instructional system design. What it does, it helps people to create meaningful learning materials that could serve the purpose so of the So they don't audience. have to go to traditional classroom? They don't have to go to traditional classroom unless you have to make sure that what you're trying to teach on, through online, it is valid and it is really uh, uh, possible. For example, if you're trying to do surgery, teaching someone surgery, okay, surgery need action work. So I know that I have broken many parts of my body and I have a lot of gone surgery. And I would not go to a virtual doctor, an online method. You go to a physical doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm an I'm a education doctor. OK, I got you. So I would not go to a, a physical doctor, a virtual doctor. Rather, I go to a physical doctor. That's what I thought. In person, yeah. yeah. So that what happened is basically that for medical students to learn surgery, operation, he or she wants to have the knowledge of how to touch the blood, how to interact with the patients, how to tell me about the insurance policy, tell me about the rehabilitation. 
So these are all hands-on. Right. So can you do uh, surgery, tracing surgery online? I doubt that you can do it fully, but you can do blended. What you can do, all the medical students can uh, review frame by frame a surgery being performed on a videotape from someone famous surgeon from somewhere in the world. After have this demonstration, how it works, then they have to go to the operating table. Mm -hmm. They have to touch the blood, interact with patients. So it is called blended e-learning. So you can use the e-learning online method for them to view the videos, learn frame by frame, and get knowledge. And these days in the colleges and universities, you uh, hear they say flipped instruction. What? Flipped. Yeah. That means you watch the video, and then in the classroom, you do a lot of discussions. OK. So you see, with the blessing of this uh, obvious instruction book, I have been giving keynote addresses, uh, invited in a different professional organization, and I learned that it is not an easy thing to do. So based on that, I have created a framework. Uh, this framework, if you can see, so what I found in this framework, I created that, that if you, for example, online method, if you want to have one of your students that you want to send him to Amazon Forest and try to teach him a course and think about what would that student require, demand from you. So I got a lot of issues that I have to think about. Then I realized that why not actually come up with ideas to put them in specific categories. So all those issues, the student will say, that, well, I'm in Amazon Forest, you give me a mobile phone, I want to learn. Is there a library nearby? Mm -hmm. Then you go ask the question, what happens? Will I get a technical support? So I put all these issues together and put them into eight different dimensions. First thing came out like pedagogical means, pedagogical means that learning and teaching. Next thing is technological. So did you, did you invent all these words? Uh, yeah, I mean, in men means I put them in the categories. Sure. So then you have interface design, like in, uh, when I was growing up in Bangladesh, uh, I used to play cricket. And when I was bowled out sometime, and my friends would go like this, you know? What means, does that mean? That means in Bangladesh those days that uh, he, 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 I mean, I challenge you, or okay. it's like derogatory. Okay. So for example, if you're taking a course in the United States, you don't know about the Western culture, and if you got one question's answer right on the computer, and then American professor will say, thumbs up. So if you're in Bangladesh, you would think that, I got the answer right, why computer is still making or harassing me? Sure. So it's called cross-cultural communication. That's why you need interface design, how you okay. design the interface. Then evaluation, in the face-to-face -face classroom, you go, we uh, kind of uh, evaluate our students, but online, many places I go, they ask the question, can you guarantee the students are learning? How do you assess them? So these are the lot of issues that you have to think about. Uh, there are plagiarism issues. People are cheating. Uh, um, then how do you know they are doing the actual work? So for this particular reason, there is a system. So I have written so many books. I said that you know if that's the situation you are encountering, then do the proctor exam. Mm. Then you have the management in the classroom. I come with my notebook and start teaching. But in online. I have to think about if this website is valid, if the students are logging in it right. So it's a lot of maintenance and management issues involved. Mm -hmm. Then comes the resource support. See, when students are taking a course online, they're thinking they can get you, send you an email and you will respond to them right away. So you see, so you need to have that kind of resource support for someone to having problem with um, technical support. So you need to have employee 24 seven technical support because they are, Online students are not with you. Sure. They are all over the places. They are all over the world. But they're not thinking that you have a family. Yeah. They will send you an email and expect an answer. Ethical, this is a mega issue. Ethical issues like learner diversity. Different people learn in different ways. They have learner preferences. They prefer this way to learn. Then you have legal issues. There are geographical diversity. For example, uh, from Washington, D.C., if I wanted to offer a course, one of my students in San Francisco, if I 8 o'clock in the morning, I wanted to have a chat session. It will be about 5 o'clock in, in, in the, the morning. morning. Right. So he's not gonna, she's not going to wake up to uh, having fun with me and so, chatting. So what would you do in this situation? Well, at this situation, you don't do synchronous. Oh. You do asynchronous, okay. meaning that you're scheduled mm -hmm. sometime. Everybody can participate. Sure, sure. Then you have 
institutional. Uh, most of the question people ask is online is valid? Will someone learn from online? Would your uh, offerings through online be same academic quality if I have gone to the regular so the university? Sure. So all these issues, so with eight, all these eight dimensional issues I found, you put the learner at the center, ask these questions, then you can do meaningful so learning. This, does this book answer those questions? It does some, but there are several books. So uh, I, uh, I believe it's that you have to design your own e-learning system. You need to find out what technology infrastructure you have, what's your capabilities, who are your students, what their need, and how would you be able to provide the service you'd be making meaningful to all the stakeholders who are involved. So is this e-learning concept, is it spread all over the world, including South Asia? Very much uh, so. In fact, I was in Bangladesh, uh, where I was being uh, taken there by Commonwealth of Learning, which is a uh, organization for learning uh, established by Commonwealth countries based in Vancouver, uh, Canada. And there I was uh, actually talking about this framework of e-learning to 23 public university by chancellors and five from India, uh, is, uh, held in Dhaka. And where I see that they have the uh, ultimate passion to go for this new way of learning. We are not forcing your e-learning that you forget about the classroom. We're talking about the blended, whichever, whatever part of the lessons and the course that you can teach online, do it. Because our children, our new generation kids, they are not like us. They are multitasking. They are using their this cell phone or smartphone learning. They're doing multitasking. So we are dealing with this kind of population. So we need to stay ahead of the game. But the problem is we are behind. There, who are we? Who is we are the people who are providing these services to our young generation. Okay. So we need to think about. We cannot give them everything there. We need to do instructional design principle. We need to think about learning theory. Which kind of content is appropriate for mobile phone, mm -hmm. and which kind of content may be good for classroom? So these are the book. Uh, the, the, I think you talked about this one. What about this one here? Managing e-learning strategies. <laughs> So Managing Learning Strategies, this book has done so well. This is all written by you? Yeah, it's my book. So all these uh, materials in here is so uh, fascinating that and I, this book has already been translated into 17 different languages. Uh, all over the world? All over the world. And so within the scope of today's uh, you know, presentation, I brought some, for example, this is in Arabic. In Arabic? It's in Arabic, but new version in Arabic. This is came from Damascus, Syria. So we are uh, there doing another one new. Uh, translation from Egypt. Mm -hmm. So it's coming out. And this one is in uh, Italian. Wow. Uh, this is in Italian. And that one in Chinese. This one is Chinese. This one is Chinese. So I have uh, 17 languages already. So uh, who says the You don't do the translation. Uh, no, you no, write no, in no. English. Uh, that's a very, very good uh, question. I write it in English. So the people who translated them, because professionally, I was very well known in our field. Okay. I was the president of Association for Education and Communication Technology International Division. Okay. So many of these professors, they either use my this first book, become knowledgeable about my work. So they communicated with me. They found a publisher in their country, then worked together. See, each in, in China, I remember that when I went there in uh, Xinhua University, one of the top university. So this is Beijing University published it. So I had to spend time with the professors to tell them what I mean. Because the framework that I have seen, shown you, this framework, if it's in India, it will be different. If it's in Bangladesh, it will be different. Why? Because the pedagogical, the way you feel of teaching, oh, okay, 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 changes. Okay. Your infrastructure changes. Okay. Technology that you have. You're right, you're right. You see, it's like a, if you take a glass of water, you can put in different glasses. But you have to take the shape of that. Mm -hmm. We can take American model to another country and say that it's going to work. Yes, it will work if we are sensitive to the issues of our stakeholders there. Their technological capabilities, their pedagogical practices, the way they think they learn the best. We have to honor them. Cross-cultural communication, their sign and symbols they use. We don't want to offend anyone, but we want them to learn and learn using modern technologies. So it's been, it's been um, very fascinating because I get to travel so many different countries. And, and you are a speaker all over the country. Yeah, all over the uh, places that uh, I, latest one I gave is uh, which is NATO, 
North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Sure, sure. And they are, And what's uh, the topic of your uh, speech was? Always e-learning. 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 And I talk about model and NATO. Uh, it's very well received. Pardon me? It's received very well. Very well. By the throughout, the, throughout, the, throughout the world. And in NATO, they uh, you know, um, announced me as the founder of modern e-learning. Wow. Because of the... That's a prestigious thing. It's, it's a very... I'm enjoying it so well. <laughs> You're enjoying it very I mean, well. I mean, I work... I work You're getting a recognition. The recognition is like, the, it's like a, you know, all the books that I'm doing. And I'm making a point that it, just don't buy a software and call it online learning. I have done it. I was a professor. And it's still teaching the professors about the model. And the new books are coming out. And um, three big volumes of International Handbook of E-Learning, Khansi Learning Tips, and another something called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. You know, there's a book coming out of that in, uh, in a few months. So this is a fascinating thing. One other thing is are, are more fascinating is this Commonwealth of Learning with the Commonwealth countries, they use uh, this, my framework, for mobile learning. They're telling all countries, see, these are all my dimensions. So this is basically very fascinating. Say so that if you want to do mobile learning, you should uh, adopt this comprehensive model. So this is done by uh, Commonwealth of Learning, the Organization of Commonwealth Countries. Wow. So this is interesting. You also write a column. Yeah, yeah. this is a column. I would like to give you a copy yeah, of this. Yeah, sure. And this is where, uh, let me go to that column. This is interesting. And what's the name of this uh, journal? Uh, educational Technology. Okay. So this is called Educational Technology. It's a premier magazine in our field. And here, because of my work, uh, they were kind enough to open a regular syndicated column called uh, Interviews with Badrul Khan. And in this column, I interview uh, visionaries who are making a difference in the world. And happened to be one that Professor Muhammad Yunus, he was the Nobel laureate. Yeah, so he was the micro microfinancing guy. Finance. So I interviewed him, and I interviewed him in a local dialect, which is Chiragonian. That was so fascinating. And in this interview, he shared his ideas about how to, um, uh, how to use online method using low-cost learning technologies. And I'm hoping to write a book with him where using my framework and uh, with his sustainable educational um, model. He has got a sustainable business model. So I said, why couldn't we use that ideas into tap into the framework of Octagon and create sustainable education development? So you harness that resource. Yes. So what's the future of e-learning? Five years from now when you come back? Well, what's... five years from now, <laughs> you'll see that. So this is a, OK, this is the column. Uh, OK. And this is the one for you. Sure, sure. Have. Thank you very and much. And so what happens, what we see in e-learning, e means electronic. E doesn't mean always computer, radio, television, anything electronic devices that you can use for improving learning. Oh, okay. So you'll see in the future, I cannot predict the future, but what I'm watching is this, I say follow the children, follow the kids. The movement they're doing, the way they're going, they're multitasking, but we have to guide them whether they can use all different devices for their learning. If it's learning, if the learning requires you to have interpersonal skill, you teach them interpersonally blended way. Come to the class. If you figure out one class, 10% of the time you need face-to-face -face interaction. Rest of the time you can use different technologies. Use it. So the future is here. The future is here. Already. Already. You need to make sure you become part of the future. You, if you are not, then you're going to be left behind. Left behind. You already left behind some of the uh, people. They are probably living in the past, but the future train is going. It cannot stop it. It's keep going and going. Okay, so that's the future. That's the future. Well, thank you very much for coming, and thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Yes, thank uh, you. This is a very, this is a wonderful, and uh, and uh, good luck to you. I appreciate it, and thank you, people like you. Uh, who are making a difference in the community. I applaud you for that, and hopefully that you all be involved in this, making a difference to the world that we come from all over the world. That is a, that's a good statement yes. you made. So this is Frank Islam wishing you a great week, and thank you very much for watching.